Unique to 3D Shoemaker is the parametric approach to shoe last design. The advantage of this is that it is much more scientific approach, meaning less artistic guesswork on what makes a good shoe last shape. But there are scenarios where freeform sculpting is a more useful tool, like when making one-off lasts, such as for orthopedic footwear. It is for this reason that Sub-D sculpting is being integrated into 3D Shoemaker, which is the topic of this tutorial. At this point, you might be wondering what Sub-D is in the first place. Well, I am by no means an expert, and if you are interested in a mathematical explanation, you'll want to look elsewhere. But my simplistic take on it is that it is a geometry type, somewhere between a NURB surface and a quad mesh. It's like every facet of a quad mesh is actually a NURB surface, and there are rules ensuring curvature, dis uh, curvature continuity between adjacent faces. This allows for watertight bodies with precise definitions that can be easily sculpted without creating curvature discontinuities. Sub-D is often the geometry type of choice for sculpting characters for movies and games. For the same reasons, it also makes a great geometry type for a shoe last that needs to be sculpted for unusual foot geometry. Sub-D can be turned on in the options form in 3D Shoemaker. Every time you build, rebuild, or update a shoe last, a Sub-D shoe last gets created. It takes just slightly longer to generate than a NURBS polysurface. But once it is there, you're able to use all of the Sub-D modeling tools available in Rhino 3D. In particular, you can grab and drag various faces, points, and edges of the Sub-D geometry as you sculpt the shoe last. Making space for a bunion suddenly becomes incredibly easy. Something to keep in mind is that once you have uh, done some sculpting, this is not part of the parametric definition anymore. So if you press the rebuild button, all your sculpting will be lost. Similarly, if you try to use the sculpted shoe last as a template for a new shoe last, only the parameterization prior to the sculpting will be taken into account. Eventually, I plan to add the ability to reparameterize the shoe last from a sculpted shoe last, but this is still a ways off. Similarly, measurements are lost and things like flattening do not work on the sculpted last, but eventually this will be built into 3D Shoemaker. So while it may seem that Sub-D is just an afterthought for 3D Shoemaker, the plan is for it to be a well-integrated part of the plugin. In the options form, you'll also notice there is a spot to control the Sub-D edge length. A smaller edge length means more faces and thereby more detailed control. There is also the option to remove the feather edge, either fully or just behind the ball line or mid arch. Blunting the shoe last feather edge is sometimes done for slip lasted shoes, uh, possibly for strobel construction. And shoe lasts for certain types of footwear like climbing shoe lasts and ballerina shoe lasts usually have blunted feather edges, and so at least some part of the uh, bottom edge. The way I like to sculpt with sub D is to turn on the gumball, set it to align to object, use control plus the shift key to select the faces I want to move and drag them. And if you ever find things are getting a bit too bumpy, just select the faces and use the smooth command a few times. I considered other options when thinking about sculpting tools for shoe lasts. One alternative was simply the cage edit morphing tool in Rhino 3D. This works okay, but you are not really sculpting but deforming the entire shoe last, including the opposite side of the shoe last from where you're trying to work. Furthermore, selecting the appropriate cage points can be challenging. That being said, this kind of freeform deformation is great for keeping the shoe last as continuous as possible and certainly will have its use cases. Yet another option I considered is mesh sculpting as found in applications like ZBrush. This too is a common uh, in character design and could be used for shoe lasts, but it doesn't maintain curvature continuity as well as, well as Sub-D does or freeform deformation, making it more challenging to maintain a smooth shoe last with a sharp feather edge that will result in an aesthetically pleasing shoe. There are of course some downsides to going with the Sub-D route. For instance, it doesn't work well with shoe lasts with, with creases in the toe box like moccasin shoe lasts. But when a high degree of customization is required, one can just go with a more standard shoe last shape to begin with. Another issue is sometimes the sub-D generation comes up with odd results. To troubleshoot these, try different edge lengths and make sure your shoe last has a relatively sharp feather edge. Too dull and it, and it won't be recognized as a crease. You can always manually smooth out rough spots too. I am pleased to be starting to integrate Sub-D sculpting into 3D Shoemaker as I really want the plugin to cater more to shoemakers doing extensive customization like for orthopedic footwear. If you're an orthopedic shoemaker, please let me know what other tools you'd like to see in 3D Shoemaker. 
That's all for this uh, tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.